Upstream thinking, solving problems caused by innovation. For months I have created content making a case for innovation as the only way for Africa to close the economic gap with the global superpowers. However, one lesson I have learned over the years is that there is no perfect solution to anything, something always gives. With this in mind, I want to encourage for solutions that look beyond the present problem but far into the problems that will arise from solving these problems through innovation. I recently read about upstream thinking by the medical sociologist, Irving Zola. Zola speaks of a witness that sees a man caught in a river current. The witness saves the man, only to be drawn to the rescue of more drowning people. After many have been rescued, the witness walks upstream to investigate why so many people have fallen into the river. While Zola was thinking of public health, I am thinking of how innovators who are burdened with solving a present problems need to plan and innovate for the problems that will arise from these solutions. Innovations are ideas or creative thoughts that have been transformed into practical reality in the form of a gadget or strategy by new imagination. In business, innovation helps them to grow and plays a very important role in terms of economic growth. It helps problem solve, especially as the world's problems continue to evolve. Innovation helps companies stay on top of constantly changing problems, especially in developing countries. We have many examples of companies resisted to innovate and inadvertently leading to their own demise. These include Blockbuster, Kodak, Polaroid, Nokia, Blackberry just to mention a few. Technology advancements have helped people with disabilities by giving more autonomy. In a nutshell innovation has made our society more inclusive and our communities more accessible. Technologies for the rectifications of social problems, solar panel and wind turbines, internet, computers, punched cards, optical scan voting, medical equipment and voice recognition are the technologies invented for the rectification of major social problems such as climate change, poverty, education, the economy, voting, health care and public safety. The simplest way to categorize innovation is into four types, incremental innovation is an improvement in an existing thing such as products, processes or services. For a business, this is a product, process, or business idea or combinations that have been enacted in the commercial center and produce new benefits and development for the association. Cadbury for example, introduces new flavors to their product line to satisfy customers' needs. Incremental innovation consists of small, yet meaningful improvements in your products, services, and other ways in which you do business. Disruptive innovation is when company introduces new consumer category. Netflix is a textbook example of successful disruptive innovation. Starting out as a company supplying DVD mail-outs, Netflix offered a cost-effective and convenient product to an area of the market that was previously overlooked. Netflix disrupted Blockbuster's business by making their services more innovative and modernized, more accessible from anywhere, and gave personalized options to users that Blockbuster was never able to match. Transformational innovation is the introduction of technology that creates a new industry and transforms the way we live and work. The iPhone has become a ubiquitous accessory around the world and changed the way we communicate, connect, create and much more. What made the iPhone transformative was the shift in concept underpinning the entire iPhone project. Its designers did not create a telephone with some extra features, but rather a full-fledged handheld computer that could also make calls and browse the internet. Apple continues to be a disruptor and pace-setter in the industry. Radical innovation is finding an entirely new way of doing something it blows up the existing system or process and replaces it with something entirely new. When asked about his car invention Henry Ford said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Few inventions have had as profound an impact on the world as the car. It was an invention that has not only changed the way people lived, it's influenced business and the economy in ways no one could have foreseen when Henry Ford put together a mass production operation for his Model T negative impacts of innovations, text messages and empathy. The invention of the telegraph did make the world a lot smaller. It helps send information across the country faster than any vehicle. The electric telegraph was invented in 1837. It was the first device that could electronically send text-based messages from one location to another. The first telegram, sent by Samuel Morse, who invented the Morse code, only traveled two miles. This simple innovation later helped the train station be more effective by knowing exactly when the trains would go to which station. 
This made the stations operate much more smoother and have more departures and less waiting time for the people boarding onto them. The progeny of telegraph as we know it, is the text message. Today, these text messages are used to ask for feedback, send parcel delivery notifications, carry out security authorizations, confirm appointments, and so much more. The business-to-consumer text messages are often called SMS notifications and are usually sent to announce special events or in response to transactions. Texts have also squeezed out the human part in communication. Morse used to write very long letters and used wonderful prose that described everything around him. But today when you use texts, you don't have that luxury. Additionally, when we as humans communicate, we use a lot of different ways of getting a message across besides words. We can look at body language, we can look at people's eyes. As a result of communicating in this one-dimensional way, what historians, linguists and scholars are concerned with is that we're reducing our ability to empathize. This useful technology has led to addiction of smartphones which is major problem. This technology is has led to a lot of wasted time instead of actual use for research and studies due to countless apps for entertainment and access to all. Social interaction has become limited. The excessive use of mobile phones has exposed the population to harmful radio frequency fields emitted from mobile phones. A study by Columbia Hospital shows that, the constant and continued exposure in the past years has increased the risk of lesser known skin problems. The radiations from the phone are an electromagnetic ray in the microwave range, 850-1800, much of which is received by the skin. Excessive listening of music can cause hearing problems. They may cause headaches, decreased attention, shortness of temper, sleep disorders and depression, mostly among teenagers. Students also have access to illegal watching of vulgarity which influence them negatively inciting them for wrong. Cyber crime. A new face of crime has emerged due to technology. More than a facility for quick search, smartphones have become boredom-killing devices. Artificial light and insomnia. Indubitably, where electricity is a major beneficial invention for humans along with that artificial light it also seems to cause a negative impact on our health. In the past, people had a healthy routine. Today, we are scheduled by too many things and majorly by clocks. Enisa Ramirez in her book, The Alchemy of Us, discussed the impacts of invention of clock in first chapter, Interact, telling that sleep was in segments at first. These segments were called first and second sleep and everyone slept that way. The TIV tribe in Nigeria still employ the terms, first sleep, and, second sleep, to refer to specific periods of the night. Artificial light also seems to be also impacting our health because our bodies actually have two modes. We have a daytime mode and a nighttime mode. Nighttime exposure to light, especially blue spectrum light, can decrease the production and secretion of melatonin, depending on the intensity and wavelength of the light. How the body knows which mode to be in is based on blue light. Now, our ancestors lived by sunlight, which has a lot of blue in it, and candlelight which had less. But we live under artificial lights all the time. When we are in daytime mode our bodies are actually in growth mode and that's actually impacting us because our cells will respond to that growth mode in ways that we don't necessarily want. A team led by the Barcelona Institute for Global Health, IS Global, a center supported by the La Caixa Foundation, has conducted the first study of the association between nighttime exposure to outdoor artificial light and colorectal cancer. The findings, published in Epidemiology, show that exposure to the blue light spectrum may increase the risk of this type of cancer. Insomnia wasn't this common among people in past before the invention of clocks. Risk of heart attack is 11% higher on Mondays as compared to other days of week, possibly due to sleep lost while readjusting to the schedule of the working week. Air conditioner is artificial cooling of room if you live in a hot area but it also makes human addicted and thus human body's moderate temperature is varied and continuous usage of air conditioner affects health making human body sensitive to hot weather as repercussion when one has to face hot weather outside body bears it hardly and opt heat related illness. More, sudden changes in temperature and humidity affect the respiratory system. Butterfly effect approach. In an attempt to explain the complex mathematical chaos theory Edward Lorenz, the meteorology professor at MIT came up with the butterfly effect. 
What Lorenz meant was that a small event such as a butterfly flapping its wings in the Amazon forest at the right time and place would trigger a set of events that will ultimately culminate in the formation of a tsunami in Kenya. The thought of similar eventualities is what I am proposing be at the core of our innovations. Today, we have female oral contraceptives and hormone therapy drugs that cause blood clots. Tamoxifen Nolvadex, which is used to treat breast cancer, was found to increase the risk of uterine cancer. Antipsychotics treating drugs such as Zyprexa lead to sudden cardiac death. In the short term, we can employ simple solutions such as limiting the excessive use of technology. Others include the implementation of natural means of resolving some challenges. There is a growing need for parents to monitor children and self with regards the use of technology. Instead children can work on the cognitive development instead of letting them on the dependence of technology. However, we must also think hard about the long-term implications of our innovation. It's time for innovators to think upstream as they solve today's problems. We are presently equipped with powerful analytical tools that if properly utilized will avert the adverse side effects of innovation to human life and ultimately the environment we live in. Policies should be in place showing concerted efforts are made to account for the side effects as well. This ought to be coupled with penalties for innovations that yield certain negative effects on life and society. This will likely increase the cost of innovation as well as time for concept to market. However, the long-term effect on health should outweigh the speed to market. Francois Rabelais once rightly said that science without conscience is only ruin of the soul. Francois stated that science and technology are at the heart of our lives and future. It's in this light that innovators must take the ethical approach of innovation to account for potential consequences of their design. Innovation ethics should raise criteria for evaluation. It should show us ways to humanize innovation and increase moral imagination for innovation built around human and societies. Given the present trends, this must include several subfields dealing with specific technological innovations, computer and information ethics, big data ethics, the ethics of blockchain and others. It is only with this mindset that we can think more upstream, mitigate drastic health and life effects of innovation. We certainly can chew the innovation gum while walking towards truly enhanced quality of life.